Well, we've made it. It is the end of 2022, and I know for many of us, it was a great year. For many of us, not such a great year. For most of us, probably a mix of the two. And I had some amazing moments this year uh, that I want to celebrate, and I want to thank uh, all of you, whether it's our patrons and our members who financially support this channel, or the hundreds of thousands of you who are subscribers, who leave comments, who like, who watch these videos and have supported this community from the beginning of the year. So there's a lot to celebrate and in the coming week or so. We're going to be doing some videos looking back, not only on 2022, but also looking ahead to the new year. And today I want to look back. I want to go back and take a look at some of the places I had the privilege of visiting, historic sites that I visited. And I want to do my top 10 favorite historic sites that I visited in the year 2022. So that means you're not going to see places that maybe I visited in previous years, places like Gettysburg, for example. I didn't go to Gettysburg at all in 2022. I was there at the end of 2021. You're also going to see some places that I visited but maybe you haven't seen content from those sites yet because I either didn't shoot any content for the channel or I just haven't uploaded it yet. So here we go. And at the end, I'm going to ask you for your additions to the list or your top 10 or just some of the favorite places that you've seen me make content in the year 2022. So let's go ahead and dive into number 10. Edinburgh Castle in Edinburgh, Scotland. The uh, capital city of Scotland has some amazing places to visit and you have not seen this content yet. Unless you follow me on Instagram, you may have seen some of the photos, uh, but I did shoot a lot of content in Edinburgh Castle and one of these days you're gonna get to see some of that, but there's so much rich history there. It's an ancient site that has history that goes back thousands of years. It's built on top of a uh, extinct volcano. Uh, it's got incredible views of the city and the surrounding landscape. Uh, and it's just one of my favorite places that I've ever been in my life, Edinburgh Castle. Number nine, Miller's Cornfield at the Antietam Battlefield. I was just there a few months ago. You did get to see some content from that site. It's probably one of the bloodiest places on the planet. Uh, so much death and destruction happened in one single day in fact in just a couple of hours and i probably could have done an entire series of videos just from that few acres on the north side of the antietam battlefield you also got to see some content from that site from my good friend jd from the history underground miller's cornfield number nine number eight the crossroads in hedrin in the netherlands uh, this was incredible for a couple reasons. Number one, like many of you, I am a huge fan of the HBO miniseries Band of Brothers. And to visit one of the sites associated with Easy Company was incredible in and of itself. But then to see just how faithful their recreation was of that location, I mean, it looks identical to what you see on the screen. And the actors who were there with us, uh, who acted in that scene said, man, what they made for us to act on was was identical to this. I got to recreate uh, Dick Winter's famous run uh, where he beat all the other guys and got up onto the dike and was all alone up there that you see in the series. And probably the most special moment of all was being with Mark Lawrence, who I consider a friend and just a wonderful human being, uh, to be with him as he walked to the site where uh, Corporal William Dukeman, who he portrayed in Band of Brothers, was killed. Uh, that was the very first time he had ever been there, and it was a very special moment to be there with him when he visited that site for the first time. So that's the crossroads in Hedrin, the Netherlands. Number seven, the Menin Gate in Ypres, in Belgium. It was on my most recent trip to Europe that I visited the sites in and around Ypres, and the Menin Gate probably was the most emotional experience I've had this entire year. And that's saying a lot because I've had some pretty emotional experiences. It's a site that commemorates 55,000 uh, British and Commonwealth uh, forces who were never properly identified, uh, whose bodies were either not found or couldn't be identified and lie in an unknown grave today. Uh, and 
you're going to see that very soon. It's my next episode that will be coming from the Eper Battlefield, and you'll see uh, how emotional that experience was for me. And uh, probably the highlight of my trip was getting to take part uh, in, uh, to, to witness the, uh, the last post, which they do nightly at uh, the Menin Gate to remember the men of the British and Commonwealth forces who gave their lives in the Ypres salient between 1914 and 1918. Number six, Newfoundland Memorial Park at Beaumont Hamel on the Somme battlefield in France. Probably the best preserved part of the Somme battlefield and an incredible place to visit. Uh, the men of the Newfoundland Regiment, now the Royal Newfoundland Regiment, uh, lost something like 85% of their men in just the span of a few minutes on the morning of July 1st, 1916, and to visit the site and see with my own eyes just how little ground was covered and how many men died in that little bit of ground uh, was a pretty powerful experience. And I know that for the people of Canada and especially the people of Newfoundland, uh, that that is sacred ground. And it was a privilege to be able to visit that site and bring their story to you back in February of this year. Number five, the Bois Jacques outside of Bastogne in Belgium. Probably my most visited site of 2022. I got to go there twice, uh, back in the spring, and then again uh, back in early November, and I'm going back again in a couple of weeks. So uh, really just not a lot needs to be said about that site. Again, Band of Brothers, uh, it's sacred ground to those who know those men's story and what they experienced. And not just the men of Easy Company, but the men of the 101st Airborne and other units who fought there. And to visit the town of Foix and to go to the German cemetery there and, and to learn some of their stories. And you haven't seen that video yet from the German cemetery, but it will be coming. Um, just incredible to walk in such a place. It's one of those bucket list places, I think, for a lot of history lovers and I'm so glad I got the chance to walk in the footsteps of such great men. Number four, Fleury on the Verdun battlefield in France. When I was preparing for my very first trip to make World War I content uh, in February of 2022, uh, I had a very nice email uh, from Indy Nidell, who is a friend of the channel, who many of you know from the Great War channel, from Sabaton History, and now from the World War II channel. He's part of the Time Ghost team. He reached out and we had a great conversation back and forth and I asked him, what's the one must see site on the Western Front? And without a doubt, he said it was Fleury and he was not wrong. Fleury is considered to be one of the villages that Mort pour la France died for France. It's never been rebuilt. It does have a mayor and it is commemorated every year. There's a sign that tells you when you enter Fleury and when you exit, but it's really just the remains of a village next to a street and there's craters everywhere and it's it's one of the perfect places to see the real cost of the great war on the human populace and uh, uh, you can see where the baker lived and where this particular family lived and here's where they found 20 German soldiers in a basement and you know things like that and incredible memorials to people who died there and uh, just was one of those places that when I visited I could really feel the weight of what happened there and it's at the top of my list for recommendations for anybody who visits the battlefields of the Western Front. Number three, Sheffield Memorial Park on the Somme battlefield in France. I was not expecting the emotion that I felt my first morning at the Somme battlefield, but when I stood in that field where the Accrington Pals died in huge numbers, were basically wiped out as a fighting unit, it hit me. It was research I had done months earlier, but in that moment, I felt the weight of what those men went through and it was powerful. I will never forget that video and I think maybe as long as I live that may be the video that I am most proud of. Number two, Douaumont on the Verdun battlefield. There's two sites that are right next to each other. There's Fort Douaumont and then there's the Douaumont ossuary and cemetery and both were powerful experiences for different reasons. Fort Douaumont might be the most powerful, most strongly built fortification I've ever uh, encountered in my life. It's all underground. It's this massive 
complex that was built in the years before World War I with these huge guns. Uh, and I was the only person exploring it on a really terrible weather day. Um, I have not showed you that video yet just because with the weather being so bad and I had to wear a mask inside, uh, the quality of the video is not up to the standard that I would like it to be. But at some point, I will try to get that edited in some way to show it to you because it was an amazing thing. But of course, many of you have seen my visit to the Duomont Ossuarian Cemetery and it may be uh, the heaviest experience of my life. Being face to face with the bones of the men who died in Verdun, this horrible meat grinder of a battle that it was. Uh, it was an overwhelming experience and it's one of those places that I highly recommend people get to if they ever get the opportunity. I do have a couple of honorable mentions that I want to bring up before we get to number one. But before we do that, if you're new to the channel, I would welcome your subscription if you think I've earned it. And if you're new or old to the channel, uh, please hit that like button every time you watch one of the videos. Leave a comment. It really does help get the uh, word out about the channel to new people. That's how YouTube recommends it. So I would just be grateful if you would consider doing those things. All right, honorable mentions. Number one, Tower of London. Uh, Tower of London is one of those things that was on my bucket list for all time. Finally got to go there this summer and it was everything I hoped it would be. Got to visit the chapel where people like Anne Boleyn and Thomas More and Catherine Howard and others are buried. Uh, got to see the place where some of them were executed. Got to go into the White Tower, which is the original part of that structure. Uh, a thousand year old building with so much incredible history. Loved every bit of it. Uh, another one, Bellow Wood in France. It's about an hour outside of Paris. In the morning that I arrived in Paris, my very first time in Europe, it was the very first stop that I made and it was a pretty emotional experience for me. Now there's not a lot to see on the Bellow Wood battlefield, but the cemeteries there, the Ain Marne American Cemetery, and that's incredible. Uh, one of the things I will always remember because it was the very first place I got to visit. Also, Polygon Wood on the Ypres salient. I got to visit there just a couple of months ago. Got to tour a little bit of that with my friend Rob from History In Your Hand, and you'll be seeing some content from Polygon Wood in the near future. Uh, incredible uh, German bunkers that are well-preserved. Uh, places like Black Watch Corner uh, and the Brothers in Arms Memorial are some of the most memorable spots on the Ypres salient. Uh, another one, Glencoe in the Scottish Highlands. Might be the most beautiful place I've ever ever been in my life, but it has an ugly history because it was there that the Glencoe Massacre took place in 1692, uh, in which uh, members of Clan Campbell slaughtered members of Clan MacDonald uh, in part of what was all kind of wrapped up in some ongoing uh, dynastic conflict in uh, the British royal family. Uh, and then Valqua Hill. Uh, on the Western Front in France. That was one that was recommended to me by my friend Sander from Sander VK History. Uh, and one of the just most unique historic sites I've ever been to. It's basically this giant uh, mine warfare center where uh, the front lines were maybe 50 to 100 yards apart and then they just continually were digging mines and exploding mines to where there's just very little left of the location. It's an incredible site to visit. All right, here it is. Number one, my favorite historic site that I visited in 2022. It's Westminster Abbey in London. Uh, top of my bucket list has been for many years. I love the story of the British monarchy. I love the history involved with it. And there's probably no site more associated with the British monarchy in the last thousand years than Westminster Abbey. But not just British monarchy, some of the greatest scientists and authors and political leaders of the last several hundred years are buried in Westminster Abbey. I got to see the graves of people uh, all the way from Geoffrey Chaucer to Charles Darwin to George Frederick Handel. Uh, to many of the prime ministers uh, of the United Kingdom. And of course, you've got uh, the unknown warrior who is interred there. Many uh, members of the British royal family. It just goes on and on and on. And it was such an incredible experience uh, to finally be in that place that I dreamed about for so long. 
All right, that's our top 10 plus a couple of extras there. Please, again, if you'd hit that like button, use the comment section below and let me know what your favorite historic sites that you've visited this year were or what your favorite of my uh, historic site videos were. Gonna have a couple more top 10 lists coming out in the next week or two, so be watching for those. Make sure you're subscribed and have your notifications turned on so you never miss another video. Thanks for watching.